The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him as your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In many ways, what we hear and experience in today's celebration is really about where it all begins in the first place. This day, we join with other churches to celebrate or reaffirm, even profess for the first time, our faith and commitment to follow Jesus as our Lord. And in so doing, we're reminded what is driving all of this. As the psalm proclaims, the voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. And we hear this day within all of our readings that voice of God calling into being, calling light out of darkness, life out of the chaos. God's voice sounding in the praise of the newly baptized in Ephesus and speaking within Jesus as he stood in the Jordan. That voice is speaking to us. But what, whoever said that voice has stopped this day is not about history as much as it is our story, what God continues to proclaim of what God is declaring for your life and mine. Perhaps even more importantly, what is the Holy Spirit calling forth as we move into a new year? In all three scripture readings this morning, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, creates something new. But do we really want something new? or simply something familiar with a happier ending? Do we really dare to accept this idea or invitation of a new life with God, which means a new orientation, new direction, not just wanting a different outcome, to somehow bless what we have been up to by ourselves alone? Do we really want that? Because after all, God is still speaking, and for a good reason. We worship a God who is not as much concerned with a past as God is about our present and even more, our future together. Ours is not a religion of virtue as if simply another civic club, but a religion of grace, what God has and is doing still. 
as we just celebrated a season that proclaims God is with us, we are reminded that what we proclaim is how God comes into what was otherwise our settled lives on our own, life on our own, and seeks to build a life that is based on something more than just life on our own terms. As we will encounter in the coming weeks, we celebrate a God who continues to come among us, to break into our settled world, disturbing the status quo. The good news is not as much about a new set of laws to live within or to argue about, but rather a message that reframes our whole perspective and even more, the direction of our full lives. In other words, it's a message that changes everything we've been about. This is a message that says, you are loved, just who you are. So be who you are, a beloved child of God, not yourself. More than codes or dogma, our faith is that of a relationship, an ultimate relationship that begins with the same declaration we hear from our gospel passage that we must trust ourselves. Trust the message itself that says, you are my child, my beloved, and with you, I am well pleased. It is a relationship, a dynamic, and not just one-sided. It's easy to read or hear these words and accept them as what is declared about being someone else or a time long, long ago. But when we take that message of the gospel seriously, we see that by our own baptism, we take on Christ. We are invited into that whole life with God. And this sounds and maybe even feel too simple to be true, but it is. It changes everything. This is what our church is all about. Our faith is a message of grace rather than laws. That's how the Episcopal Church has seen the gospel. Rather than idea or turn or burn, ours is a message of invitation to come and see, come and experience this thing that has taken place, that our old lives and indeed all the things that we've known are being made new, not just in this beautiful space, but indeed our whole life. We are people who are formed and reformed by that same Spirit of God. Martin Luther spoke about baptism as being a once-in-a-lifetime experience that takes our entire lives to complete. John Wesley spoke from this conviction that we are justified by grace and then led towards sanctification for the rest of our life by that same Holy Spirit. So our faith journey our whole life with God is a lifelong relationship that is meant to grow and mature as we each do physically. Like any relationship, this new life of God with us cannot be something we simply assume is there and stand on its own without having to put any effort into it or expect life to be different even if we don't embrace a new life focus ourselves. We can't just wish for a different outcome. We have to embrace the full invitation. Perhaps the greatest challenge to a message of unconditional love and the grace of God is that it calls for you to surrender the hold that you would otherwise have held or placed on yourself alone. It's no longer by your own limited strength, your own limited experience, and your own wisdom by yourself. The relationship we are called to grow into is based on our trust of that message that we are beloved by God, children of God. We are invited and called to trust in something other than just ourselves alone, in a power beyond our own strength and knowledge, and to discover something sacred in and through what we experience together and communally, as well as we grow individually. This is what John the Baptizer came announcing. This is what Jesus inaugurated with his own baptism. And this is what God bestows with the Holy Spirit to each person ever since, with our own baptism. In this scene from our gospel passage today, the voice of God is continuing to do something new. Jesus is commissioned anew, washed and sealed anew, and sent into the world for this new mission. And on this day, every year, we celebrate a truth that we too, by the nature of our baptism into Christ, have become that instrument of God in this mission of God to begin with. This is what we, in essence, proclaim with each and every baptism, renewing our own baptismal vows, and affirming what God has done and continues to do, making all things new, including us, including the church and our individual lives. So today we return to where it all begins. 
We are people who are formed and reformed all by that Spirit of God. The voice of the Lord is, is a powerful voice and continues to call you and me intruding into our settled world and is making this life and indeed all things new. Amen. The prayers of the people are form two, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. In the course of the silence after each intercession, I invite your own prayers. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Wayne, our provisional bishop, Kristen, our bishop-elect, Darren and Martha, our priests, for all deacons, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among all nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and for those who suffer from any sickness, grief, or distress, especially Abby, Alex, Anne, Bill, Bunny, David, Jacob, Jane, Janet, Keith, Lana, Lily, Lou, Marsha, Mary, Nancy, Penny, Pete, Richard, Ryan, Rod, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of the Ukraine and the Holy Land at this time. And we pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world. I invite your own names and concerns offered either silently or aloud. I invite your own thanksgivings offered either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Please let us join together in reading the Stephen ministry prayer. Caring God, thank you for how you call us to bring your light of hope and love to others. Continue to guide us in our care, especially with our Stephen ministers. Give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care-receiving relationship the courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk alongside them. By your presence and Holy Spirit, continue to strengthen our Stephen ministers and leaders to provide the Christian caregiving that you have prepared them to do. May the child of Nazareth that we celebrate this season bring you joy. May the man of Galilee that we learn from bring you strength. May the Christ of Calvary, who is God's great gift to us all, bring you courage. May the risen Jesus that paves the way for us bring you hope. And the ascended Christ that we follow all our days bring you a foretaste of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, this day, this season, and always. Amen. <laughs>